Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to go over the details of how you might set up this animation here in Desmos, where you move points around, you can drag them, and you always see the midpoint. You see it as a label, as an, 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 a numerical value, and you see the equation down here changing as you move these points. So this is actually, I think, a really fun one. And the way I'm going to get started is to set up two points. X1, Y1, hit enter, and it makes all the sliders. And then X2, Y2, and it makes all of the sliders. I'm going to put these points in our friendly location so we can see both. So here's X2, Y2. Here is X1, Y1. We need a line going through those points. So let me just get that up top here. I'm going to use the point slope form of a line, and maybe I'll just type this out here. So the point slope, it's going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and you've probably seen that before. So we're going to generate this formula right now using these points. So we have y minus y1 equals m. Now the slope, I'm going to hit a slash for a fraction. That's going to be, I'll do x2 minus x1, nope, <laughs> y2 minus y1 over, let's rise over a run, x2 minus x1, that's our slope, and then in parentheses, x minus x1, and you can see that that's our line right there. Now we have a line. The cool thing here is that we want to restrict the domain or the range of this so that wherever we're moving our points, it knows to only include between those two points. And uh, there, there are many ways to do this, but one of my favorite, I'm gonna do it like this right here. Okay, so in this case, we wanna go from where? We wanna go from this point, zero, zero, up to four, zero. So in this case, this is x2 right here. The x value of x2 is lower than the x value of x1. So we could say, restrict our domain on this line between x2 and x1, just like that, right? Let's do x2, so x between x2 and x1. There it is. But that's a problem, because if I drag it on this side, it disappears. And that's because there are no points on this line where x2, let me drag this over, x2 is less than x1, right? So when this point moves from this side to this side, in this case, remember this is x1 that I'm dragging around. Now the x value of x1 is lower than x2. So what do I do? Well, I'll try this x1 less than x, less than x2. It still doesn't quite understand, does it? And now it doesn't show anywhere. So if we think about what's happening, we're, we're gonna tell Desmos, all right, well, with these two points, we want you to go from whichever of the two points has a lower x value up to whichever of the two points has a higher x value, right? So like in this case right here, this is x2, the x2 value is lower, we want that to start there and go up to this x value, up to x1. But in this case, we want to start off at x1 and go up to x2. That's going to change. How do we do that? Well, it's a really cool command. We can type in min for minimum. And if I put in parentheses, I'll do it this way, in either order, x1, comma, x2, it's saying start at whichever is lower, the minimum value, x1 or x2. Whichever one's smaller, start there and go up to, let's use our maximum function, whichever is bigger, x1 or x2. And that will sort it out. I love that little command because it's just so powerful because now, whichever way I go, right, it understands how to draw the line. And now we're, we're, that's our basic setup. Now we see another point that's at the midpoint here. And the midpoint formula, let me move that back. The midpoint formula, as you might know, you add up the x values. So x1 plus x2 divided by two. That's gonna be the x value of your midpoint. And the y value of your midpoint is gonna be y1 plus y2 and that's over two. We'll prove that in class. So in Desmos, we can set up a point. Just type in a point command, get your fractions going, comma, fractions, and x1 plus x2 over two. That should be over two. 
and then y1 plus y2 over 2, and boom, there's our midpoint. Now, if you click label right here, it'll give you a numerical value. If you type in midpoint, though, it erases that numerical value. So we want both. So what I'm going to do, and you might find a better way of doing this, I'm going to just copy that point and also do that. Now, remember, you can mess around with the location of labels if you hold on to this right here. I want to make sure that one of them is on the left, and then so I'm going to click the left, and then for the other one, I'm going to click the right. So now as I move these around, they won't interfere with each other. And you can change the colors to make it look good. All right, we're basically done. On the bottom here, we're seeing it uh, basically have a text box that shows this calculation process. So how can we do that? Well, I'd like to set up a point, let's say at negative 5, 5. Let's do that first. So I'm going to set up a point. Negative 5, comma, 5, uh, negative 5. I'm going to make this point invisible because I don't want the people to see it. I just want it to be a location for my text. And what I want to put in is the formula for the midpoint. And there's my label. I'm going to put that back tick in there. And then another back tick. The back tick is the button next to the, the one on the keyboard for me. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change the size. Let's say five. That's enormous. Two. There we go. And put it right in the middle of the point. I'll go up here. How about that? So there is the formula for midpoint. And maybe I'll just throw an equal sign in there. Equals, and I guess, you know what, we can just copy and paste this again, right here. Let me zoom in so you can see. This is the LaTeX notation right there. And I'm going to delete this little tick mark, recopy it, and then put the tick mark back. Now what I want to do is make it dynamic. So as I change my line, the values down here change with it. What do I want to change? Well, I want to show the x values that I'm using changing. So how do we do that? Put a dollar sign and then close it within brackets. And let's just zoom out and see if that's working. You can see right now, instead of x1, I have 0.75. That's because I put in that dynamic command down here. Now I'll do the same for the next one here and over here. There's for y1 and then y2, dollar sign, brackets, and boom. So now I'm going to drag this over. How's it look? It looks okay. Uh, this point, though, is really not in a helpful place. So I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to make it draggable. And I'm just going to drag it where I want. And now I think we're good to go. You can see everything changing. It's not perfect, um, but I think it looks pretty good. What I would also do is I'd hide this point right here. We don't need to see that. And now I'm able to see the midpoint calculated on this line anywhere I go. All right, hope that helps.